recent study by Cian's Analytics, a global research firm, states that in India, out of all asset classes, be it gold, fixed deposits, government securities or equities, real estate had outperformed all, generating the maximum returns in the past two decades. We're talking about annualized returns of up to 20%. Real estate in India is a hot subject and everyone with some quantum of savings wants to invest in property. But doing it smart is the way to go. And so smart advice is what you get on The Property Show. Samir Jasuja, founder and MD of Prop Equity, is going to review all your investment queries and get you the best deals in town. Let's look at today's lineup. The Okla Bird Sanctuary issue hanging fire over thousands of flat allotties in Noida now close to resolution. The latest developments coming up on the show. Also, our research advice on your queries, the developing sectors of New Gurga, should you hold or exit your investments. Noida's best projects that make the cut for investments under 50 lakhs. Hyderabad's top residential markets for investments under 70 lakhs. ITCD Bangalore smart options for homes in 50 lakhs. Navi Mumbai promising destinations for mid-segment investments. And Thane's Godbunder Road, prime property bets in 85 lakhs. All right, we'll begin the show with Gurgaon and Noida first. Our first call on the line, Mukesh Kaval. Hi, Mukesh. How can we help you? Thank you very much, Sudha, ma'am. Hi, Mukesh, Samir, sir. Hi, Sudha, ma'am. Good evening. And uh, Samir, sir, good evening. Good evening. What's your question? I have booked a 3 BHK flat in May 12 in Sector 89, Greenopolis. My booking price was 4500 And I have made 30% payment within the next four months. I have booked it for investment purposes. My next installment is due around end of this calendar year, and I'll be taking a housing loan. Okay. Now my question, there are two questions. Should I hold it or should I sell it? If I have to sell it, then what is the price I'll get? And any recommendations for investment? Second question is, if I have to hold it, what price should I expect at the time of possession? All right, uh, 3C company, Greenopolis, sector 89. Uh, what kind of appreciation can you expect in times to come? Should he hold or exit? Well, uh, first of all, we would believe that his investment horizon was also a very long one. Uh, it he was mentioned it. in his email it was up to 10 years. Yeah. So if it's a long-term horizon, I think it would be a great idea to hold on to this investment. Uh, it's a 47-acre township, JV between 3C company and uh, Oris Infrastructure. This project is also PE funded, so I don't think this project will have any uh, problems with respect to execution. The delivery is somewhere in early 2017. Uh, any project that in New Gurgaon that gets delivered uh, should be trading around 6,000 rupees a square foot uh, going forward. But uh, at the same time, uh, 2017 is quite far away, so there could be further price appreciation that could be witnessed over there. Uh, so from our side, it's a hold. Uh, if you look at the supply, it's 19,000 units uh, and new supply is not coming in that much. So I think supply has got uh, stabilized now and slowly, slowly you'll start see inventory moving also. The weighted average price is 4,900 and the price appreciation has been about 40% over the last two and a half years or 16% on an annualized basis. So even if you get to make 10 to 15% year on year, I think it should be a good investment to hold on to. Okay, so 6,000 rupees per square foot you expect in the near term and yeah. uh, over 10 years Today that could... the current resale price is around 5,000. 5,000, okay. So Mukesh, uh, that's a whole call for Greenopolis by the 3C company, sector 89, New Gurgaon. The project is also funded by private equity funds and uh, it's also a certified green project. So uh, all's well with the project and uh, given that you have a long term uh, waiting horizon, you can expect some upside there. Uh, Samir says uh, already in times to come, about 6,000 rupees per square foot could be the price that this project could reach. All right, next uh, we have uh, Ashish Kudesia joining us on the show. Hi, Ashish, what's your question? Hi, Vasudha. My question is uh, about uh, two projects. One is Vihan Greens in uh, Greater Noida West. I'm getting this at a price of about 2700 all-inclusive. My question was about the, uh, the reputation of the builder, one. And the second is the proposed connectivity from this point to Noida Sector 78. So that is a bridge that is supposed to come up. I wanted to get a view from uh, the experts on, on whether this will be a good one. Ashish, you had also spoken to us about another project by Ajnara. Are you still looking at that in Noida? Yes, yes, uh, that is right. 
Okay. So Ashish is looking at an Ajara Ambrosia project in Noida and Vihan Greens in Noida extension. He wants to know the builder reputation. Yeah, between the two projects, we would recommend Ambrosia a little bit more by Ajnara India as the developer is reputed, although the price is more expensive. Mm. But the location is also much better. Uh, if you were to look at uh, the Noida extension, you have to keep in mind that there are about 175 projects over there and about 150,000 units coming up, wow. of which 55,000 still remain unsold. So that is a huge inventory in the market, which will lead to moderate price appreciation going forward. Although the price that you're getting in Noida extension is quite good, but the developer is uh, new into real estate, although they've built a lot of uh, railway guards, rail underpasses and roads, but uh, as far as pro uh, real estate development is concerned, it's a, f it's a new developer as such, although the, quite a few banks are approving this project. We've got one more recommendation for you, but before that, we'll just look at some key data points of the market. We're talking about the upcoming region from 70 to 122, which is a preferred location from our side. There are inventory of Orang is 20 months. The weighted average price is 5150 rupees a square foot. Price appreciation is 15% on an annualized basis. If you were to look at the recommendation from our side, the Romano by Supertech is a project that is trading at 43 to 4500 on the resale market. The project is based on Roman architecture and has good amenities and specifications for a mid-segment project. And uh, project land was earlier had issues, but that has been resolved now. Uh, this is one project that you could look at or you could continue with Ambrosia. A little bit about Ambrosia as well. Uh, it's an old project, uh, was earlier stuck due to farmer agitation, but now this issue has been also resolved. And the project that uh, you're getting, uh, pricing is 4020 per square foot, all inclusive. And the weighted average price of the market is 5150. So you're getting a steep discount to the market. Okay, so Ashish, uh, we feel that investing in Noida is more advisable at this point over a market like Noida Extension, Greater Noida West. There are several petitions of farmers of various villages that fall under Noida Extension. They're still being heard in the Allahabad High Court. And uh, in some cases, uh, land acquisition for various projects has been scrapped and the court has ordered that you need to go in for fresh acquisition and uh, offer compensation and rates which are agreeable to farmers. So you can expect a lot of delays there, uncertainty and definitely crash, a cash crunch for the developers. Also for the Noida region, the Okla Bird Sanctuary issue has been like a sword hanging over thousands of flat buyers. The property show has the latest on this now. Top official show sources have told NDTV that the eco-sensitive zone around the sanctuary is expected to have a radius of 100 meters, as suggested by both the Delhi and the Uttar Pradesh governments. Onitam Ojha joins us with more on that. Onitam, this leaves almost all projects out of the National Green Tribunal's radar. Absolutely, Vasudha. Some good news is in the offing as far as the home buyers and developers in the Noida region is concerned. Uh, according to top Environment Ministry officials, uh, the ministry is very close to finalizing the uh, notification that would uh, notify the eco-sensitive zone around the Okla Bird Sanctuary. The radius around the bird sanctuary is likely to be set at 100 meters, which will be notified as the eco-sensitive zone. However, this is likely to increase in areas closer to the Yamuna River. Now, why the Environment Ministry has uh, uh, thought of uh, fixing the radius at 100 meters is because of suggestions and reports uh, submitted by the Delhi and the UP state governments. Now, the other thinking that's going on in the Environment Ministry is that 100 meters uh, should be enough to maintain the balance between maintaining the ecology and keeping the birds safe in the sanctuary, as well as making enough land if available uh, for the uh, habitation of uh, people around the region. Uh, remember, uh, there was this issue that came up way back in April when the NGT had imposed a ban on uh, housing projects, real estate projects around uh, the Okla Bird Sanctuary, uh, stating that the eco-sensitive zone has not been uh, declared or notified by the UP government, which is when the issue uh, had now moved to the Environment Ministry. Now, the good news here is that the Environment Ministry is likely to uh, notify uh, the eco-sensitive zone as early as next month. Now, let us listen to the Environment Minister. I absolutely sympathize with those who have uh, purchased the flats and they are in difficulty. But as you know, the matter which is in the courts will definitely take a look, but uh, will definitely find out and will come to a decision sooner than people expect. 
Now, issues like the Okla Bird Sanctuary case arise only when states fail to comply with the environment conservation guidelines that have been mandated for regions that witness rapid urbanization. Recently, the NCR Planning Board, which decides land use and urban planning for NCR, wrapped its member states for alarming depletion of the natural conservation zones that include water bodies, forests, etc. Now, the NCR Planning Board has noted that its 2005 regional plan has not been honoured by member states, which includes Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, Haryana and the rest, and areas which were meant to be untouched as natural conservation zones have been developed. Let's make sense of this order on today's expert talk. We are joined by environment and RTI activist Colonel Sarvadaman Oberoi and advocate Gaurav Bansal, who has been fighting numerous environmental cases in the National Capital Region. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, all right, so we're talking about NCR Planning Board's recent uh, direction to member states. We're talking about the NCR Regional Plan 2005. Now, as I, what I understand, it's a statutory document. You're meant to honor it, abide by it. And any kind of, uh, you know, tweaking in its, um, in its jurisdiction, and you're talking about acres and acres of, you know, really valuable prime land being opened up for exploitation, for development, while it should be conserved according to the plan. Uh, what kind of violations are we talking about? See, these are very, very serious violations because the let's remember that the NCR board was set up for precisely this reason to prevent such a situation from happening. And what has happened is the NCR board has been in dereliction of duty for the last about 25, 30 years and has really been, I have written to them that you are in dereliction of duty and they just kept silent. And now finally they have chosen to issue a notice at such a late stage when the because the Ministry of Environment said that we will not approve your revised regional plan till you sort out these issues. And that's when they've issued the notice to the states. It's very late in the day, but anyway, it has come. Now they should stick to it. Right. Uh, Gaurav, in your uh, experience of fighting these related cases, um, why is implementation of the master plans and the sub-regional plans, which are sub-parts of the uh, broad NCR regional plan. Uh, why is it so easy to, uh, you know, not comply with the main master regional plan for these uh, member states? See, basically the problem <clears throat> with the government is this. The NCR PB board, the National Capital Region Planning Board, has no will. I can say that they, uh, they, there's a lack of will in the implementation. They know that the violations are going on. As uh, Colonel O'Brien said that they have written uh, many times to the NCRPB that there are the violations. But what <coughs> uh, restrains them from issuing the notice? Right now they have issued the notice in the section 29 of the NCRPB Act. But they can do it earlier also. They have to be very precise and what I think is that uh, when I, uh, there are certain cases which I am uh, fighting in the uh, uh, NGT and NCIPB is also the party as a respondent. <clears throat> I think that when the case, I go, go deeper in the case, I feel that it is only just because of the uh, lack of the will of the NCRPB that such cases arise. So my how, how can that happen? The yeah, planning board happens. is headed by the Urban <clears throat> Development Ministry. Obviously, see, I can give you a fresh example, a very recent one. There is a Dhirpur wetland in the New Delhi, uh, in the Delhi area, which uh, uh, which comes under the Rohini area. Okay, in the Delhi, uh, the Dhirpur wetland near to the Dhirpur land, wetland, there is a project of the Delhi Police. What the Ministry of uh, Delhi Division of the Ministry of Urban Development did, they have converted the land use of the river you can, can can you imagine that they have converted the land use of a river into the residence and have uh, and give undue benefit to a uh, one pr private builder so they know itself and the case is pending in the ngt ngt was ngt was also surprised that what they have done and now the case is pending in the ngt so does that mean the ncr planning board needs to introspect within itself first before mm -hmm. it can uh, uh, wrap these member states because its own uh, functioning is not uh, that strict. See, let's remember what is the NCR board? It's the chief ministers of Rajasthan, Haryana, <coughs> uh, Delhi lieutenant governor, and the uh, you know the states themselves. They yeah. are the board. So what happens is you scratch my back, I scratch your back. When Rajasthan wants something, they tell the other states, "Ki hamara kaam, let's let's have a work done. You will do your work." 
So this is what goes on back scratching. And the urban development minister sometimes is on their side and sometimes is not on their side. Right. It's anybody's ball game. But the point is, the majority vote lies with the states. Yes, if there's a dereliction, the central government can step in. Now, the urban development minister wears two hats. One hat he wears as the chairman of the board. And another he uh, wears as the final authority of the president of India on this board. So he has two hats. Now, it's up to him which hat he wants to put on. Mm. If he wants to sort out those chief ministers, he can put on his hat of the government of India and say, get lost. <laughs> but he has never done it. He has never done it. And unfortunately, I am finding that the uh, developer lobby generally manages to reach their tentacles into the urban development ministry, you know, and it's, it's there. Mm. I don't want to name names, but I know, I go there and I know that I am not entertained, but they are. The current sub-regional plan 2021, is it going to address all these issues that uh, the NCI planning board has now uh, reprimanded these member states about? Depletion of natural conservation zones? See, depletion of natural conservation zone is something which <coughs> the NCPRV has to look earlier. Now they have come with, a not uh, with an issue, uh, with this uh, notice and they are saying that, yeah, we have a will and we will uh, look, in, uh, look in into all these things and we will uh, manage. So the question is this, that what restrains them? Okay, my all, uh, I always uh, say to, to the authorities that what restrains, why you people uh, come forward when we enter into the court? Why don't you people come earlier? Okay, mm. it is their duty. It is their duty to protect us, to protect the environment, to protect the future. But uh, very sorry, uh, they are not doing so. Right. Uh, Colonel O'Broy, uh, you've been very vocal about the uh, Regional Plan 2021. You feel that it uh, drastically dilutes several environmental provisions. Where does the plan stand now and uh, have they tweaked some of those weak norms? See, we are very lucky that the Environment Ministry has given us a lot of uh, hearing and they have, in fact, except one small issue, they have more or less all our issues have been put on paper and put to the NCR board and the NCR board has been driven into a corner that their re revised regional plan 2021 is not going to be approved till they sort that issue out. Mm -hmm. And the fallout of that is on Haryana. Haryana sub-regional plan 2021, which Haryana has illegally notified, mm -hmm. is actually illegal because the revised, it is based, it says it is based on the revised regional plan. Right. Unfortunately, that revised regional plan has not and cannot be approved mm -hmm. as it stands today. So therefore, Haryana is in violation of law itself. Right. So today we are in a situation where MOEF has to play its role and if by chance it should withdraw, it will be a huge disaster. And the issue about uh, Gurgaon's Aravalis that uh, are being zoned for development in the Haryana sub-regional plan, has the NCR planning board addressed that issue? Well, they have addressed it. Right now, there is a case going on in the Fridabad court where uh, notices are being issued. Mm. So, uh, there is a um, land involved there which is being tried to be, you see it was public land earlier has been uh, illegally converted to private land mm. and we are going to get it declared that it is uh, public land. So okay. that issue is there. Mm. But you know a bigger issue is that the Aravlis are a bulwark for Delhi for its protection and most of us forget that in Haryana it is just 3% of the Aravlis, 97% lies in Rajasthan mm. where the maximum damage is taking place. Mm. And the CEC report about a week back has reported to the Supreme Court that there is massive damage taking place in Rajasthan. Hmm. So, the, if the Aravlis goes, Delhi goes. I can assure you, right. the entire Aravlis up to Udaipur are being demolished by Rajasthan in an illegal manner and this is going to have a problem. All right, on that note, uh, we'll bring this discussion to a close. It's very important to look at our urban planning norms today and the NCR planning board plays a very important role for the national capital region and whatever des decisions they take impact uh, urban planning and development of all member states and specifically the master plans and the sub-regional plans of all states, which currently have a myopic vision, a short-sighted vision, uh, only talk about creating new regions for development, little talk on... Um, issues like water and uh, traffic management, transit development. So those issues need to be uh, taken into mind and NCR planning board's first move to uh, bring these uh, member states to book is a positive development but a lot needs to be done for NCR planning board's own structure as well. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me today.
On that note, we'll take a small commercial break. Meanwhile, you can connect with us on our phone lines with your property-related investment queries. We'll come back and look at Hyderabad's best destinations to buy a property with a budget of 70 lakhs. We'll also review Bangalore's electronic city and Whitefield for their growth potential.